Hello everyone, back at it again on another fishing adventure, carrying the kayak through the woods, but we're doing something a little different today. We are fishing an old mill pond. Now in my area in New England, these mill ponds were fairly common, and um, some of them were grist mills for grinding wheat into flour or um, or uh, corn into cornmeal, something like that. Uh, could be windmills that were doing that, or I guess water-powered mills. Uh, but this particular one was a uh, up and down sawmill. Uh, it was established around 1800, and it ran till about 1840. And the new owner of the property, when he bought it, he bought it mostly for the land and he had to reconstruct the uh, components of uh, the sawmill because they were in bad disrepair. And so he had to cobble together different parts and pieces from all over New England. And what he, he got together was a functioning mill. It just uh, didn't have the same capacity as the original would have. So you can see the mill up there on my right. I had to look for an area where I could plunk the kayak down without getting all my stuff wet or me wet. Somehow I managed to stay dry, but it wasn't the, the prettiest launch in the world. But I am still dry, except for a corner of my uh, towel there. But that's all right. Getting myself situated. We'll take a closer look at that, that sawmill in a second. So it's called an up and down sawmill because uh, the power of the water takes a big saw blade and literally brings it up and down vertically to saw through logs and make, um, make boards and, and lumber or whatever you needed. So around 1805, 1810, there wouldn't be a, a, a much of a power grid here and they needed a, a way to, uh, to saw boards without doing it by hand. And they made these, these, uh, these mill ponds and, um, and used the water wheel to power a saw. Now this sawmill has been reconstructed a few different times. They wouldn't have nicely poured uh, concrete foundations on the original dam. It'd probably be uh, some kind of a rock wall. There's another view of it. It's actually a little bit bigger than that, that little uh, building in the front there. Uh, so the way it works is water goes down one of those flues on the right, drives a big wheel, and that drives a gear, which uh, puts the saw up and down. There's also some mechanism for advancing the wood uh, against the saw, and, uh, and in that way it, it uh, it can generate boards that you can use to uh, put on the outside of a house uh, or a sawmill. Like like the, the boards on this sawmill all look like uh, they have rough sawn lumber siding. And I believe they were milled on site. There's a, a building out back, like a little shed, that we'll take a closer look at and you can see the the, the saw markings from rough sawn lumber in it. You can see the, um, the uneven edges from um, sawing, you know, live, live edge wood, I guess you would call it. But, but trees naturally are not perfectly straight up and down. Yeah, here we go. Here's the shed. Now they cheated a little bit and uh, used some modern uh, uh, fasteners and things like that, but you can see the like teeth marks in the uh, in the posts, the corner posts. It's kind of a big gap there. They use some modern hardware to put it all together, but you can see the the saw markings in the cross bracing there, and you can see those like the the teeth marks in the uh, in the posts that help advance the wood along. That's what I'm assuming it is. And you can see that the edges aren't completely straight, you know, they go up and down. Cheated a little bit with some kind of Simpson strong tie fastener down there in the corner post. And um, yeah, on some kind of, I don't know what, skid, 
good uh, footing there, foundation. And uh, yeah, but that's the kind of stuff you can make with an old sawmill. Now, it really only runs now for uh, school trips or some kind of demonstration purposes. Uh, so it's, it's not exactly abandoned. It is functional, uh, but it doesn't run, you know, all day, every day like it would have in 1800. So this is about a week or so after ice out. The water is still very cold. And what I'm doing is just paddling along and looking for fish. And you can see I've paddled into some very shallow water. It's probably about a foot deep here. And the fish will be uh, moving up shallow on these warmer days, just trying to get warm. And you see, I just ran through a bunch of fish. See those uh, kind of swirls on the surface? There's more of them right up ahead of me. And, um, and those, I found out, were, were mostly sunfish. But they weren't all that interested in eating. They were mostly interested in, in, uh, in warming up, I think. And they are in inches of water. I mean, I can see the bottom clearly on camera. And um, I mean, on my right, it's probably six inches deep. And on my left, it's probably, uh, you know, closer to a, maybe a foot deep. And so this creates some challenges. Uh, I've got no wind. The fish are very spooky. They're not very hungry. They're just trying to warm up. I've got my hooks tangled in my new net. This is not a great start, but we will sort everything out. And, um, you know, you could think about fishing a bunch of different lures, uh, but it's going to be tough because it's just so, so shallow. The fish are very spooky and they're not super interested in eating. So my idea was to start out with a, with a float and a little ice fishing jig, a little tungsten jig. I'll list all this stuff in the video description so you don't have to keep track. But just to make a very, very short lead between that, uh, it's a thill shy bite uh, float, and make that lead uh, b between the ice jig and the float about six inches, which is about what I thought I could get away with without constantly snagging weeds. If I don't throw that, that jig right up into the very shallow stuff on the bank, and there were some fish, I mean, in two, three inches of water. I mean, they were almost shallow enough so that their backs would be out of the water. Super, super tight to, um, to, to shore in the warmest possible water that they could find. I'm trying to hold that float a little bit steady for the camera. It's not really working. It's bouncing around a little bit, but it is a Thill Mini Shy Bite, Thill Mini Shy Bite float with a... Uh, uh, one thirty-second ounce tungsten ice jig. There's a giant new house going in over there. You can see it in the top right corner. And it looks like it's made out of foam. Not really sure how to describe it. I mean, most houses that I've seen are, uh, you know, stick framed um, with... Uh, two by sixes or, or whatever it is you're going to use. Uh, this is made out of some kind of bluish green foam. I assume it uh, has better insulating properties, but it's going to be a giant house. Used to be just woods back there. But if you go up a little further, there's actually a second pond. It's more like a swamp, but um, they, have, they have these... Uh, Two ponds uh, in, in cereal, I guess you would say. And I assume that's either for water flow purposes over the, the dam so they can, they can make sure they can generate enough flow to, um, to saw lumber. Or maybe for flood control purposes. I'm not really sure, but there's, there's, there's two dams and two ponds. There's an upper and lower pond. So I'm going to fish my way around here and see if I can scratch together um, a few fish to make sure I get the skunk out of the kayak. 
and I need a few more degrees of water temperature and we'll have more fish um, eating and not just I don't know it's like they're sunbathing or basking in the sun they're just trying to warm up I think they're not they're not super aggressive at all all right I kept working my way up along the bank spooking more fish but hey what's this I actually got a fish to bite that one ate a piece of plastic that I had on there with some scent it's about a medium-sized sunfish but this time of year I'll take just about anything most of these fish they seem more intent on warming up than actually eating so I kept working my way up along the bank and I got to the north end of the pond where there is another dam that separates the upper pond from the lower pond and this is more of a spot that I would think about fishing in the summertime uh, it's going to be more oxygenated water but also um, a little harder for the fish to, to stay in it uh, just because th that current's moving pretty good and so they have to expend more energy just to stay in the same place whereas they could also move into some of the uh, slower moving water the slack water which is a little bit warmer and uh, they can warm up there I also noticed the water's down about two feet uh, so that's probably not helping uh, the bite either they might have dropped the water in advance of some rain that's coming in uh, there's probably some baffles in that lower dam and they can just make more capacity as needed uh, to prevent flooding and um, you know having the water go up and over the dam you can see a, a better view of the uh, upper dam now and that's probably more like what the lower dam used to look like there's a like kind of a cutout section where they put in a spillway but uh, and that looks modern it's got some nice uh, cement castings and a, and a walkway over it but the uh, the rock wall that's pretty thick and has grass growing out of it yeah that's probably more like what the original dam looked like for the lower pond but I just had to try this area and, and just to see if if there was any uh, fish hanging around and of course there weren't for the reasons I listed before but I don't know you never know until you try and I, I like trying out things just to, to make sure that um, you know I'm not following a pattern that I really I really am being misled by but no the pattern was shallowest warmer water and that seemed to be where the most fish were I did notice as the sun was uh, getting a little bit warmer that these, I think they're caddis, some kind of caddis fly, uh, started hatching. And the fish started to take notice of those flies skidding, skittering across the top of the water. And they got just a little bit more aggressive. Not super fired up, not like a fish every cast. I still had to work really hard for them, um, but just a little bit more aggressive. And if I thought about it, I might have even caught a few on a, on a fly rod or uh, some kind of dry fly. Or even maybe I could get them to go for a popper if I fished that popper, a little tiny popper really slow. There he is. Nice little bluegill. They were giving me trouble though. And... Um, one of the things I had to do was to take off the plastic, which is usually a pretty short thing. I even had a, um, a mayfly looking plastic on. And I know they're probably more like caddis flies than mayflies, but um, that fish went after the bobber, which is unusual. But um, eventually I think I did end up hooking him. But I had to take the, uh, the plastic off and... Ah, oh, you know what that is? That's a little pickerel. And, and little tiny pickerel and tungsten ice jigs do not mix well on light line. But I was able to get him in the boat before he uh, cut me off. But that explains why the fish was going after the bobber. There was a fish just off my, my right bow that, um, that just scooted away. They were super shallow. But anyway, I had to take the plastic off and fish just a plain piece of worm 
in place of the plastic because they were being so fussy, so difficult. They really just wanted to warm up in the sun and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm messing up their sunbathing. But if you stuck something in their faces long enough, eventually one of them would eat it. What I've done here is I've backed the kayak up onto a, like a mud, muddy bank with a bunch of leaves and the, the shore is actually holding me in place like an anchor. And then I can cast out towards the middle where there's just a little bit more water. Not a ton of water, but just a little bit more water such that I can, uh, I can fish around a little bit easier. I kept picking away at those medium-sized sunfish for a bit, uh, but I couldn't find anything bigger up shallow. You can see how shallow this water is up here on the northern part of the pond. It's a little bit deeper towards the dam. That's how most of these, uh, these mill ponds are set up. It's the deepest waters near the dam. Uh, and I know that there's some, some decent sized crappie in here and bass uh, because I've caught them when it's been a little bit warmer, but I couldn't find any other active fish shallow. And I tried to fish out in deeper water for a bit, but I think it's just too cold. I've, I tried uh, a shad fries, I tried uh, a Z-Man larvas. The wind picked up too, which wasn't really helping uh, boat positioning in the kayak either. And it seemed to mess up the, uh, the caddis fly hatch or whatever those, those little flying bugs were, which also seemed to slow down the bite. But I gave it a try and I couldn't uh, find any other patterns on this day. I think what I really need is about another 10 degrees in water temperature. It was actually fairly warm uh, on, this, on this trip, maybe 55 degrees, but when the sun went behind the, the trees, it uh, started to get cool pretty fast, and, and all the fish I caught were still cold to the touch. So I think just another, I mean, even five degrees of water temperature would do me a world of good. Now I'm back to almost where I launched. It's a pretty small pond. And I got to get myself up and out of the kayak without flipping me or the kayak into the drink. That went pretty well. I stayed dry. And once again, I'm carrying my kayak through the woods. At the top of this little hill here, you get to see a little peek at that, uh, that shed that they have the, the rough sawn lumber on. But I had a good time, a uh, good afternoon on this, this little mill pond. And uh, it's a fun place to fish. I like it, uh, especially on, on days where other places would be crowded, uh, especially on weekends where, you know, anything with a, a good boat ramp is just mobbed and packed. It's a good parking area here. And just a short walk through the woods, I'm, I'm, I'm onto some, uh, some water that usually nobody else is gonna bother with uh, dragging a kayak through the woods for. And the fishing can be pretty good, especially on days when there isn't a lot of wind and bright blue skies uh, and then I'm thinking trout or panfish and this pond happens to have a lot of panfish. All right, thank you all for watching. I'll uh, list everything in the video description just like every other video and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!